Hello everyone, today we will see how to use Ansoft HFSS to design a rectangular patch antenna. So first of all we launch the Ansoft HFSS software. So this is the Ansoft HFSS, this is one of the most widely used software tool for design of microscope antennas. So first of all we have to click this insert HFSS design. So once I click I will get a 3D coordinate system where I need to design my rectangular patch antenna. So let's see what are the dimensions of a rectangular patch antenna. So this is the basic structure of a rectangular patch antenna it has a substrate this is the substrate uh, which is basically a dielectric material a ground plane which is a co copper sheet and there is a patch which is also a copper sheet and in this case we are going to use micro slip feed line to feed this antenna so there are many kinds of uh, feeding techniques and such as co coaxial feeding proximity feeding uh, etc uh, we are going to use this micro slip feed in this case so this is, these are the basic dimensions of a rectangular patch antenna, length and width and depending upon the length and width the resonant frequency of the antenna becomes different. And we also have to select the length and width of this substrate and ground plan uh, so that we can accommodate this micro strip antenna and the feed line on the substrate. Uh, if you see, uh, in this example we are going to place the antenna in such a way that uh, the center of the antenna and the substrate remains at the center of the at the or origin of the coordinate system and so let's see how we design the antenna and this is the side view of the antenna uh, we can see here uh, if you see from this house side view uh, this is the substrate the green color this is substrate and this is ground plan and this is the micro slip transmission line and the paths so so the uh, in our case most of the commonly used pcb has a thickness of 1.5 mm and the copper sheet on the top and the bottom have a thickness of 0.05 mm. So if we see the Z coordinate system, we will place the antenna in such a way that this point, the top layer of the antenna lies at the Z equal to 0 plane, which is the XY plane. And um, since the thickness is 0.05 mm, so this along the uh, top of the antenna and the transmission line, Z will be 0.05 mm. Similarly, at the bottom, it will be minus 1.5 mm, and here minus 1.55 mm. So now let's design the antenna. Uh, let us design the antenna for 2.4 gigahertz. Now, what will be the length and width of the antenna for 2.4 gigahertz? Now, in order to calculate that, we have an online tool, which is www.emtalk.com. So, if you go to this website you will find this tutorials and tools and here we have a micro strip patch antenna calculator once I click this now I have to uh, give the dielectric constant of the substrate so we are going to use FR4 epoxy substrate which is a dielectric constant of 4.4 uh, the height of the, the dielectric height is 1.5 mm and we are going to design the antenna for 2.4 gigahertz now I click the synthesize button. So once I click, I will get this dimensions. Length is 29. Point, uh, around 29.5 mm and width is 38 mm. So let us assume that our substrate and the ground plan are 60 mm by 60 mm. So first of all, I have to click here, draw box. So just make three clicks, first click, second click, third click. So we will get a box here. This box will be our substrate. I give the name. Then I give the material, which is FR4, FR4 epoxy. Then I give some color. I can give any color. It does not matter. So this is the substrate. Now I have to assign the dimensions of this substrate. So position will be minus 30 because see our substrate is going to be 60 mm by 60 mm so this point must be along x axis this line must be minus 30 and this is plus 30 similarly along y this is minus 30 and this is plus 30 so that this becomes 60 by 60 so minus 30 comma minus 30 comma uh, along z axis it is going to start at minus 1.5 mm minus 1.5 mm and its x position is x size is 60 mm 
y size is 60 mm and z size is 1.5 mm so I click ok and if I click this uh, fit all the contents in the view I will get this substrate so our substrate is created now let us make the ground plan so for that I have to click here again so I get the ground plan then I name it ground plan and material will be copper copper I give some color now I fix the dimensions so dimensions will be the same minus 30 minus 30 minus this time it will be minus 1.55 this is minus 1.55 x size will be 60, y size will be 60 and z size will be 0 0.05 all are in millimeters now you can see our ground plan is created below the substrate we have the ground plan now let us make the pads the pads will also be a box and this is pads then I give copper I give some color the patch is created now I have to give the size of the patch now our dimension of the patch is 29.5 mm by 38 mm so we can see 29.5 divided by 2 will be 14.75 so this point this point will be minus 14.75 comma and uh, half of half of 38 mm is 19 so I give the dimensions that's minus 14.75 comma minus 19 comma 0 because it starts at it starts at z equal to 0 z equal to 0 now this will be 29.5 this will be 38 and this will be 0 0.05 so x y z so this is the paths now we have to give the feed line along x axis now let us assume that the thickness of the feed line is 2 mm so I just click here and yes this is 2 mm so this will be see we don't need to assign any material of the feed line for now I'm telling you why so we have to give the dimensions along x axis its position will be minus 60 sorry minus 30 along uh, since it is along thickness will be along y axis so and its size will be 1 mm sorry 2 mm so this will be 1 and this will be 0 so for now we can give any size of the along the x direction uh, let us make it 15 and this will be 2 mm and this will be 0 0.05 mm. so since this is going to start here so start at minus x equal to 30 so this is 30 and our feeding line will be symmetrical about the y axis so it is starting at minus 1 and its size is 2 mm ok ok see our uh, s this line is slightly less it is not touching the patch right so we have to make it slightly longer so make it suppose minus as we, uh, instead of 15 we make it suppose 19 we can give any length now it is touching so we have to name it name is feed and since I have not assigned any material because this feed and the patch are connected so for that we do one thing we click this patch and we press control and click this feed now our patch and feed are selected remember first of all we patch, click the patch select the patch then pressing the control we uh, click the feed so that 
first the patch is selected and then the feed is selected and then I click this unite so you can select here or you can also go to uh, modeler boolean unite so if I click this now you see this feed becomes a part of the patch you can see here this patch and the feed becomes parts of the same entity now our basic structure of the antenna is created now we have to give a port so the port is basically the excitation port um, uh, we will see how to make the port so there are three kinds of ports available in HFSS out of which we are going to use LAMP port so this LAMP port to make a LAMP port we have to make a rectangle here a 2D rectangle now you see the rectangle will be in the YZ plan so we select the plan it will be YZ plan and I have to give a rectangle here so to make the rectangle I again give uh, draw rectangle so just you need to two clicks first click second click the rectangle is created now I have to adjust the dimensions and positions of the rectangle so position will be along x axis it will be minus 30 because this will be at the th uh, starting point of the paths along y direction the width of the rectangle must be equal to the width of the feed line so this will also be symmetrical about the y axis so it will be minus 1 and minus 1 and along z axis this feed line has to cover all the it has to cover all these three so it has to start at minus 1.55 and it has to go its height should be 1.67 because the sum of all this will be 1.6 so that it covers the entire thickness of the antenna so we see this will be 1mm and this will be minus 1.55mm along y axis it will be 2mm so that it is symmetrical about the y axis like the feed line and along z axis it will be 1.67mm so now you see this rectangle is created this rectangle touches the ground plane and the feed line and its width is exactly equal to the feed line so this is the lump port now how to make now we have to uh, tell HFSS that this is lump port so for that I have to select this right click here assign excitation lump port then I click next modeler new line so you just have to make two clicks one at the bottom and one at the top so it is defined next finish so our lump port is created this is the lump port now I have to put a radiation boundary so radiation boundary is basically a air box since our antenna will be surrounded by air so we have to give a air box and inside the radiation boundary is treated as near field of the antenna so for that we have to draw another box and this box must be big enough so we usually make it double the size of the substrate so for that uh, this will be your radiation boundary which material will be air and I assign some color and we usually make it transparent so we put some transparency of this so this is a transparent box and we have to select the dimensions so this is quite big so we give some randomly big dimension I am just making a double of the substrate actually this has to be almost the half of the wavelength of the uh, antenna uh, x equal to 120 y equal to 120 and z equal to 120 I click ok so our radiation boundary is created now I have to make it create radiation boundary for that I have to click here select this right click assign boundary and radiation boundary okay so our radiation boundary is created we can see, see this this is the radiation boundary so our antenna is created now we have to assign the simulation setup of the antenna so for that I have to click this add solution setup and our antenna is 2.4 gigahertz and this maximum number of pass this should be 10 if it is too less then sometimes the simulation is not done properly and for more complicated structure we have to make it bigger than 10 
so for this structure i think 10 is enough i click ok and then i have to give a sweep now this sweep is basically a range of frequencies for which all the parameters of the antenna are calculated so we since our antenna is two, for 2.4 2 gigahertz so i make it 1 gigahertz to uh, 5 gigahertz this interpolating actually we make it discrete because there are three modes one is discrete one is fast and one is interpolating so don't never go for fast because if we go for fast calculation then the result is not accurate and for interpolating actually the main drawback is that we cannot uh, store the far field for all the frequencies therefore we go for discrete so here there is an option save fields for all frequ frequencies so using this option we can uh, save the far fields of all the frequencies so I click ok so our we are ready for the simulation now I save this so I can uh, make some project so I save this so our simulation is our antenna is ready now we have to start the simulation so before that we click this this is fairly that so if there is some error in the design it will show here and now I start the simulation so HFSS takes a lot of time to do the simulation so by the time it simulates I'm just going to fast forward so you can see this uh, the simulation is running so first of all it will because see we have defined here one setup this is 2.4 gigahertz so first of all it will calculate and everything for the 2.4 gigahertz and once it is done it will start solving the sweep and sweep is always because this, these are the frequencies because our step is 0 0.1 gigahertz so this is the steps and uh, it will always uh, solve in the reverse order it will start at 5 gigahertz like that uh, so I have fast forwarded the simulation and it is now complete so let's see the result result of the antenna I click here result right click create model solution data report and the first one the first one here also first one rectangular plot click one now we find the S11 parameters DB so I click new report so this is the result of the antenna and we can see that there is some resonant frequency of the antenna at 2.4 gigahertz actually if I simulate it for some more number of points we will get a resonant frequency between 2.3 giga, uh, gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz and another resonant frequency we are getting at 3.7 gigahertz so at the resonant frequency this shows a peak in the negative direction and we have since we have calculated for 2.4 and 2.5 gigahertz 2.3 gigahertz at the interval of 0 0.1 gigahertz so here we don't see the resonant frequency so in this in such case we have to increase the number of points and see the resonant frequency by the way let us see the far field radiation pattern of the antenna for 2.4 gigahertz for that first of all we have to insert a far field setup so this radiation go to HFSS radiation insert far field setup infinite sphere so I can put some values it is 0 to 360 degree the value of theta and uh, phi and theta I click ok and now if I click this result create far field reports 3D polar plot and make it gain and db we can see the far field radiation pattern for 2.4 gigahertz so it takes some time so our result is created so this is the far field radiation pattern of the antenna for 2.4 gigahertz so as you can see the maximum gain is 3.326 gigahertz uh, db which is uh, pretty good for rectangular patch antenna but since our we have to work on this antenna so that this return loss becomes less at 2.4 gigahertz so this is all about this tutorial thank you